Are you ready to listen to a podcast? This is TripleYourClients.com with your host, Andy Brown. Find, subscribe, and listen. Expert marketing advice to triple your clients today. Now you can start listening. Welcome to episode 48 of TripleYourClients.com podcast. My name's Andy Brown. As ever, it's a sheer pleasure to have you on board. Whether you're running to work, cycling, crawling, <laughs> whether you're skipping to work, whatever you're doing, thank you very much for tuning in to the show. There are many business shows out there. I've just been listening to Chris Mars' The Marketing Academy podcast. Highly recommend it. Wealth of knowledge on that show. Chris runs a successful digital marketing agency and always got a great story to tell in every single show. Highly recommend it. Chris is from this part of the world as well. Good friend of mine, but that's not the real reason why I'm recommending it. It's just because uh, Chris knows his stuff. He's passionate about it. Uh, it really gets you fired up uh, when it comes to marketing, content marketing. So, yeah, have, have a look at it. Learning-everyday.co.uk forward slash podcast. Great show there. But the re- And the reason why I mention it is because there are so many shows out there. And the fact that you tuned into this one, I, I really, you know, I can't thank you enough because it's a busy world out there, isn't it, in the <laughs> internet space and the interwebs. And uh, the fact that you found this show and you bothered to come back, then, uh, it's, you know, it humbles me, really, basically. Um, but it's it's been a busy week, a busy week, and it's it's late now on a Sunday night. And I made a commitment to get these shows out to you. So I'm sticking with it. Uh, I guess I'm reading those goals thinking, why did I write those goals? But when I wrote down 40 consistent weekly shows, I meant it. And uh, I, I wrote it down there for moments like this. You know, earlier Sunday night, I was thinking, shall I do the show? But, you know, I knew I was going to. I mean, that, I knew I was going to. But you kind of play mind games with yourself, you know, late Sunday night. You know, what do you really want to do? But you've got to be consistent. And later on in, in the show, I'll be talking about how consistently consistency wins the day and uh, i think it's a a big big reason why some businesses fail and some are successful so i'm trying to be consistent this week i've been consistent in my weight loss I lost 15 pounds by my juicing i spoke about it before with joe cross i highly recommend it there's show notes will include uh, a link to uh, the second film i watched this weekend uh, the first one was called fat sick and nearly dead and the second one's called fat sick nearly dead two <laughs> so <laughs> it's uh just number two in in I don't, I don't think he'd be bringing out another one but he's been a pioneer over the last few years with juicing uh motivated so many people so yeah fascinating documentary and has been a real catalyst for uh, some of my weight loss journeys over the last uh well 12 months nearly put it all to the all to uh, rack and ruin actually because i fell down the stairs last night i think my wife was uh my wife thought we were being uh, burgled when i shouted out for her name as i slipped on the top step and i i prevented myself tumbling down the stairs because uh my foot got stuck in the banister but that was that was well, which is good news but my my toes actually wrapped around uh, one of the spools in the banister and that was a bit you know square spools and it was like oh it was really painful but luckily it didn't break any bones, so uh, I'm grateful I'm still here and I can get on the treadmill tomorrow and I can carry on without uh, any of the worse. So yeah, crazy week. And uh, But this week, uh, Bill Upton from A1 Computer Solutions, he left a review. He says, in the short time I've been listening to Andy, he imparts very useful information and I've downloaded all previous episodes. So thank you very much, Bill. Do appreciate it. We're on 10 reviews now. Reviews on iTunes and uh, reviews on TripAdvisor, Amazon, Google, all these types of plan- platforms, they're very important to the people producing the content uh, because Amazon and the like will use the, the uh, reviews to rank you, you know, and, and Apple on iTunes will use the reviews to rank you. And the more reviews you can get, the higher you are in the rankings and the more views you get and it motivates you to produce more shows. So there is a reason why I ask for the reviews. It's not just so that I feel good about myself. It is so that more people can listen to the show and so I can continue being motivated to produce the show. Although I am always motivated every week because I do get a lot of feedback and actually, you know, generally get into a conversation with one or two of you out there every week and that turns into a friendship, like a, an online friendship. And uh, there's a lot that can be taken away from that. So yes, yes, there's so much merit from doing a podcast. So if you're thinking about it, get started and uh, check out the the podcasthost.com if 
you got any questions about podcasting, Colin Gray over there will help you out. Yes. So what else has been happening this week? Well, I'll tell you about my email marketing because on a Monday or Tuesday, I try and get an email out to my list to talk about my show. And the previous shows had an open rate of 27 to 28%. And I changed the headline to just one line or one um, descriptive piece of text as opposed to three different uh, points that you would learn in the show and that really made a big difference and I mean it wasn't a surprise in so much some of my previous headlines that I've used in my autoresponder um, list have served very well using that method for instance I made a mistake another one is I'm concerned also my best advice yet um, a rather long one but it, it did work really well was here's your 67 video 67 second video on getting to the top all of those worked really well. They were in the mid-30s when it came to uh, open rates. And like I say, with my emails I was sending out to my uh, list with the show notes, they were about 27 to 28%. Uh, when I changed the headline to why your business needs a screaming frog, a bit of curiosity in there and uh, maybe a benefit, you know, your business is going to gain gain something, then that went up to 32%. And I'll try, I'm going to try the same uh, strategy this week and see how it goes and I'll report back and if, if you're receiving the emails you'll know why I'm doing what I'm doing but the takeaway for you really is can you put a little bit of curiosity into your headlines can you put a benefit for instance with the the video one I'm talking about getting to the top getting to the top of Google uh, and on the curiosity side of it you know I made a mistake you in naturally thinking well what mistake did Andy make and then you can read on and I talk about a business mistake and then I turn it around and say this is how I corrected that mistake and this is how it can benefit your business. So you're not playing any games in so much. You're not going to deliver on what you said in the headline. It should naturally flow on. Um, the one that says I'm concerned it talks about um, a, 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 the business problem that businesses are making or the problem they're making in their business and then it goes on to offer a solution. So it should be a natural, like I say, going from the headline through to the content. You can't just go off and talk about something else just because um, you you know, you feel like it or you want a great open rate, but then you don't actually talk about what you're talking about in the headline. Some, some, you will get a very good open rate if you use bad news or even good news because that's human nature again. People want to hear good news or bad news. Uh, and there was a spate a few years ago when everyone was sending out these emails saying bad news and they talk about bad news maybe in your business or a trend that was happening and then they talk around talk about a product that would uh, improve it but yeah I, di I didn't feel very good about sending an email out saying bad news but you know people were testing it and in marketing you know it worked in so much as an open rate but of course you always got to think about your audience because if they think, well, you know, that wasn't very clever, that, that made me feel bad looking at a headline that says bad news, then really you're destroyed or you haven't helped the relationship you have with the audience. So you're always going to be mindful of that. But, you got, you know, you've got to be testing as well, see, seeing what works for you. And also, when, when they, if you're crafting this email and you've got a good title and you've got the open rate and then they're reading your copy and you want them to link, uh, click through then you've got to make sure that you've got enough links in there and two is a minimum and sometimes I've only had one in there and that's that's a mistake. You should have at least two links in your email to the content you want someone to click through to and put it put one in the PS because people always scan down to the PS. They, they, they can scan through all the content but they will look at your PS and that's a sort of copywriting 101 when you look at a sales letter. You always see a professional copywriter will always put a link in the PS, you know, they will, they will have a PS and a lot of people will not, won't have a PS if they haven't studied copywriting. So definitely do that. The last email that I sent out, I, I really cut down on the amount of content I had in it because I felt that was, um, wasn't doing myself any favours in terms of getting the click through. And so I cut it down. I also included, the, you know, the essence of the content I wanted to get across. So it was a fairly short email and that served me well. I had a good open rate with a new headline type and then I had a good open rate because I had two links in there, one at the top and one in the PS. So yeah, good good news there. And uh, other good news or or interest I came across was uh, social media dojo, 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 social media dojo, which is uh, the social media group set up by Alan Martin over this side of Scotland. 
he's got a website at chatmarketing.co.uk. He decided to set up this social media Facebook group. Highly recommend it. It's a place where he says you can brace your inner ninja. Uh, Martin, you know, he, he's very good at what he does. Uh, he's a full service marketing and training consultant and, uh, you know, wealth of knowledge. But the one thing, why, well, why I'm recommending his site is because there's a lot of information on there to do with social media. One article that really struck me this week was uh, one from medium.com, which was a teenager's view on social media. And we all listen to the social media gurus who might be in their 30s and 40s. But, you know, what a great thing when you're a teenager talking about different platforms. And we're finding out what they really think of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Tumblr. And then in part two of the article, it talks about YouTube, Vine, Reddit, Google+, Plague, Elo, Tinder, Swarm, Snapchat. So all of these platforms, he gives a real good insight. This is a teenager writing his real insight into what teenagers are doing. So if you're catering for a youthful market, then, or even if you've just got children, you want to work out why, why they're doing what they're doing, then I highly recommend this article. And it will be in the show notes. The show notes, as ever, will be the number of the show after tripleyourclients.com. So it'll be tripleyourclients.com forward slash 48 for this show. So check out that article. Another article I'd like you to check out is just the, the write-up by uh, autoexpress.co.uk. They got uh, an article called Apple CarPlay Worth the Wait. And it's a quick review of Apple CarPlay. And I mentioned this in previous shows because it's indicative of the way it's going in podcasting, getting ever more popular so you can see the review of CarPlay within a Ferrari California T. Now, that's the only car it's in at the moment, but uh, going on later on in the year, next year, there'll be many more cars with Apple CarPlay in there. Now, at the moment, it's an add-on at £2,400, so <laughs> it's only for the very rich. But, like I say, it will become mainstream in a few years, and that's when podcasting will become mainstream. And those who have started podcasting now we'll be able to uh, look back and think, oh, brilliant, <laughs> we, we started on this platform, now it's mainstream and it's worth all our effort. Um, that's what, uh, not gambling, that's that's what we all believe. You know, the people who've got a podcast believe it will go mainstream and that's why they're doing it. They're getting their content out now, they're, they're developing their audiences and they're creating a medium to get their content out there to talk to their audience. So if you believe that it's going to become mainstream, then you should you know, start to look at building a podcast. And I do go on and on about this, but it is so important because one thing is content marketing is not going to go away. The, the aspect of being the teacher and the authority in your market and getting content out there and being seen as the authority. And the other thing is the delivery of the content, yes, through blogs and websites, but also through podcasting. And the medium which it can get out to the mainstream is via cars. There's no doubt about that. I know we're listening to, to shows on our smartphones, but cars is going to be a major play. And it's just happening this year. And then it will happen next year. And then it will just become the norm you know, go, going forward. So, yes, be, be consistent in your podcasting and you will see results. A bit like the uh, video bloggers that uh, are hitting the press at the moment. I don't know if you've heard of Soella with her 7.4 million subscribers, but uh, she's sort of kicking up a storm and getting on the British Bake Off and all these sort of shows. And some people are probably thinking, where's she come from? But for me, it's a big takeaway that if you're consistent over time on a certain platform, you can create a massive audience and you can create a living from it. And if you're a business owner and you're wondering who's going to look at your videos, then if you're consistent and you create an audience and you create a channel that becomes popular, then you will have an audience or you will have new people coming to you in years to come based on content you created years ago. It's sort of passive type of uh, sort of passive kind of strategy, really. Create the content now, get the, uh, the, the eyeballs later. You know, you've done the hard work once. So people like Zoe Sugg of Soella and uh, Tanya Burr and Jim Chapman, these, are going to, these people are going to become household names. It's interesting, I was looking at another channel called uh, Sakon uh, Jolly, um, S-A-C-C-O-N-E-J-O-L-Y. They produce a show every week, sorry, every week, every day at 6 p.m. And they've got nearly a million subscribers. And if you look back at the uh, history of their videos, it's 1768, 1,768 videos they produced 
And that is playing the long game because when they started four or five years ago, they didn't know what was going to happen with the way that videos could be monetized, whether how advertisers would be coming to them, paying them tens of thousands of pounds just for one video. It's, it's crazy how it's really taken off. But the trends were always there and we can always look at the video traffic at the moment and see how a large percentage of his video and it's always ever increasing. So it's just having that belief and being consistent. So hats off to them. And whilst I don't really watch a lot of the content they're producing, I do subscribe to their channels and I do really look at how they're engaging with the audience, how they're changing their message or changing the content in each video, sort of jazzing it up, you know, coming from a different angle, keeping themselves motivated, how, how, how consistently they're producing the videos just to get insight into how they're running a successful YouTube channel because every business should have a successful YouTube video or channel. So lots of takeaways there. Let's move on to um, when I meet a business and I sit down and we start talking about marketing. One of the first questions I ask is, do you know what a new customer is worth to you? Do you know how much you're willing to pay for a customer? And once they tell me that, then we can really open up the conversation and work out whether paid advertising is going to work for them. Most people sometimes, get, well, most people get bogged down and, oh, I'm not paying so much for a click. But they don't really look at the essence of whether paid marketing is going to work for them. And that's working out whether they can afford a customer. Do they actually know how much a customer is worth to them? It's so exciting when a customer, sorry, a, a business owner will say, look, I know exactly what a customer is worth to me. I know exactly what I, what I want to pay. And then I can advise them on the industry rate for the, the clicks that they want to pay. And then we can start talking about different campaigns. And I'm also very excited when they know how to add a page to their website, because sometimes it's a, T, a HTML website and they, they're a bit scared or they, they just haven't got the knowledge how to add a page. And that can be a bit restrictive because if you want to run a successful campaign and a paid campaign, often you need to create extra pages. And if you can't do that easily, uh, if it's expensive to do, then it might uh, hamper the efforts to have a successful campaign. So, yeah, very exciting when they do know the cost they're going to pay for a customer, plus they've got access to the website. They're very au fait with adding content, adding pages. They might be run already running a successful content marketing campaign. They might even be experimenting on Twitter and Facebook. They may, may even have done Google AdWords in the past. Once I hear all these sort of green lights, these uh, uh, understanding about their business, then yes, it's, it's a great thing to hear. Equally, equally, if someone has just started and you know they haven't got much budget and they created the website themselves, themselves and they've got some problems maybe with the copy and maybe they're sort of coming from them their angle so they're talking about themselves rather than talking about the customer maybe they haven't got a form on their website maybe it needs a bit of a, a tweaking or maybe it needs a lot of work then i am very honest very transparent and, and say to them look i don't want you to waste any money on paid traffic to your website until you've got the right platform for this con for this traffic because it is just not going to convert. Typically, organic traffic will convert better than paid traffic. And so I would want to see already organic traffic converting on their website. A lot of people will create a website. It's not really getting much content, uh, sorry, getting much traffic from content they have online. And then they want to spend money on paid advertising. And well, I guess many agencies might say, yes, let's go for it. But I would kind of put up the red flag and say, if you've got a minimal budget or you know, even if you've got a large budget, then consider doing these things first. And it might even mean you know, redesigning the website. Might be, if you're on HTML, I might, I might suggest you know, getting a WordPress website. I have done that in the past. So there's a lot of balls that got to be in place before you can actually start a paid traffic advertising campaign. So if we take the, the, uh, the story or the situation that someone has got a website, they have got maybe a WordPress website, they're ready to use paid advertising, then they might want to look at remarketing. Remarketing is a way that you can get traffic that's visited your site already to come back to your website. 
It's a bit like uh, the old story that uh, people have to see your message seven times before you before they buy from you. It's like the follow up, and if they're not on your email list, and how they're going to see your website again. And one of the ways to do that is through remarketing on your website. You've probably seen this yourself. You've probably been to a website, maybe you're looking to buy some shoes or clothes, and then you go to a newspaper website, and there in the right corner, on the right-hand side, you see an advert for the company you've just been on. And then a few days later, you see the same advert, and you feel like you're being stalked. And you wonder how it's happening. A lot of people wonder how it's happening. They think it's magic, but actually it's called remarketing. And you can do it on Facebook and you can do it on Twitter and you can do it on Google AdWords. And it's it's, it's a norm now, really. And I, I, I say stalking and you kind of have to be a bit careful because if you run it for a year, <laughs> then it will feel like stalking. So typically someone might run it for 30 days just because after 30 days you might think, well, no one's going to come back once they've seen you ad that many times. And also it's better spent on other other people. So you've got to be careful. But like I say, it is a norm and it consists of um, a simple a simple strategy, really. All, all you have to do is whatever you're using, whether it is Twitter, Facebook or AdWords, you basically have a some copy, sorry, some um, code, just a small snippet of code and you drop it into all your pages. So if you are using WordPress, it's quite easy. You can drop it into the, the footer widget. And then um, that's it really, because people will come to your website, a cookie's dropped. And then when they go to uh, the, the websites again, when they go to other websites again, then uh, they have the opportunity to browse your ad again. <laughs> and it keeps coming up, you know, and coming up. And, and, and they will click through and they will return to your website. And it's a, it's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful system. And, uh, and I highly recommend it because the return on investment is, is superb. So in a nutshell, you can show your ads to people who have visited your website or used your mobile app, app before. So you, like I say, you, you, they've been on your website, they leave your website, and then as they're browsing the web, they see relevant ads. And these ads will display on newspaper sites, uh, relevant sites, or uh, whatever sites. It just depends what you've set. Now in Google AdWords, you have something called the display network. And that's Google's way of saying, look, we've got a portfolio of websites where we can display your ads. And that could be newspaper websites, you know, the Independent, Telegraph, Daily Mail, and it can be authority sites in different sectors. And you have a complete control over where you show those ads. Or you can just say, you know, it, it can display on every ad or every every site. You know, you, you got you know, you got control, which is which is brilliant really. Um, you know, you're not wasting your money on showing ads on irrelevant sites. So you can always be very consistent in your targeting. Uh, and also you, you can build up what's called custom audiences. So by, by that I mean if someone has been browsing your website and they come across a page that sells one of your products, then you can say within Google AdWords, you can say, look, everyone who lands on that particular page, I want to put them in a particular audience, a particular list. So if you're selling a certain kind of shoe on a shoe site, then they, you know, say 30% of your visitors find that page, then you create a list of all those people. And then once they leave that site, you can show them dedicated relevant ads related to that sh shoe when they're browsing the web for the next, like I say, the next 30 days. And they, you know, the people who had an interest in that shoe, shoe in the beginning will come back because they've been they've seen the ad again. It's like another touch point. And like I said before, if you get seven touch points and someone's going to buy, I know that's theory, but you, you can appreciate that if you get your ad in front of someone after they visit your website, it's only going to enhance your brand and they're going to trust you more. So I thoroughly recommend it. You can also also do it for YouTube videos as well. If someone's been to your channel or watched your videos, then afterwards they can see your ad on other websites on the display network, as I say, for AdWords. And uh, also they have something called dynamic remarketing, which is where you can actually show specific products and services in the ads. So it's not so much a general ad that you display for your website, but it's the actual product. So they've been searching for... Uh, say a food blender or a vacuum cleaner or a, um, a TV, 
And then when they're on another website, there is that picture again of that TV that they've been looking at. And that's usually done through something that's called dynamic remarketing within AdWords. So there's so much that you can do, and it's all about just placing a tiny bit of code on your website and then defining these different audiences and then making sure you put the right ad in front of them. So you're always looking at these sort of mini funnels back to different pages on your website based on sort of the audiences you created, very targeted audiences, niching down on who's going to actually convert into a customer. So just wrapping up, when people think of AdWords, they think of maybe just the ads they see on Google. But I would say, yes, that's one way, but also the ads can display on other websites, and that's called a display network. They can display in YouTube. That's another way of using AdWords. And fourthly, they can display using remarketing. So someone visits your website, then they go and browse other websites, and they see ads back to your website. And that's a pretty good way of getting a follow-up. So... If, if you're thinking, how, the, how can I get people back to my website? Do look at the possibility of remarketing using AdWords. The return on investment is very high compared to other forms of marketing within paid advertising. This is across Facebook, Twitter, and Ad, AdWords. You always see really good case studies. And it's obvious, really, because if someone clicks through for the second time or the third time of seeing your ad, and they've already been to your website, it's not like they're new to your product and your offering. And if you have produced a very relevant ad and it's a, almost maybe a discount or maybe some other voucher or uh, exciting offer that you put in front of them, that tied up with the fact that they would have been to your website makes an enticing um, opportunity for them to buy. You know, it's a compelling statement, compelling uh, ad in front of them. So yes, yes, consider that. So that's today's show. I have thoroughly enjoyed it as ever. Hope you enjoyed it. Do remember to test your email headlines. Don't just stick to boring, bland ones that say exactly what's on the tin. Maybe you've got to spice it up a bit. Also check out uh, Alan Martin at chat-marketing.co.uk for that article. Well, check out his social media group, but also check out the article on social media written by a teenager. That's uh, on the website called medium.com. I'll put that in the show notes, as I said before. Always keep on the lookout for what's happening in podcasting. I'll keep you abreast, but maybe you can keep me abreast by sending me articles you see about podcasting. Thoroughly passionate and interested in what's happening in that space. And also, uh, don't dismiss what you hear in the press about the uh, video bloggers. Say it's not for you. It is for you because <laughs> these are people that have been consistent with their marketing and getting their content out there. And if it's taken them four or five years to get there, then it's been worth it. And I'm not saying you've got to wait for four or five years to get results because every business who starts now will get results in a few months' time. But the real tipping point sometimes does take a few years to get to. But it's it's always good to look at other platforms and what other people are doing. I find it fascinating. Hopefully, as a business owner yourself, you also find it fascinating. So until next time, in a week's time, another seven days, hope you have a fantastic week business is good. Maybe you get some sunshine. We nearly got some snow here late in the evening at uh, in St. Andrews, but I don't think it's settled. So that's going to be good. I don't, uh, um, I don't mind skiing in the snow. I only done it a few times, but I don't like it when it's uh, just on the pavement. So I've slipped over enough times and uh, I don't want to recreate what I had uh, last night with slipping down, <laughs> down the stairs. Um, yes, I am accident prone, as you already know, because I broke my finger at the end of last year with the uh, the football. That's another story. So I'm, I'm trying to not break too many bones this year. Hope you had an enjoyable show. Uh, check out uh, Chris Mars' show if you're looking for another show to listen straight after this one, the Marketing Academy podcast. His website, learning-everyday.co.uk forward slash podcast. But until then, take care and have fun. Have you ever wished you had more visitors to your business website? Where you switch a button and instantly benefit from a steady, consistent stream of new potential clients and customers. One such proven way to do this is by using Google AdWords. Unfortunately, many businesses fail to take advantage of this opportunity, make huge mistakes and waste their marketing budget. This is why I recommend you head over to TripleYourClients.com 
and grab Andy's free 44-page report on the 17 ways to maximize your Google AdWords ROI today. Simply enter your name and email on the homepage to have full access to Andy's special report within seconds.